welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Taya and this is Taya's Turning Pages. So by the title of today's video, you can tell that this is going to be a Barnes & Noble book haul. Um, I went to Barnes & Noble yesterday with my boyfriend and I kind of went a little crazy. I went crazier than this actually, but I ended up you know taking my time sorting through everything that i absolutely needed right now and things and books that i could wait on and i ended up with eight so you know I, not great not not awful but like we're here so yeah i'm going to get started because my camera is dying per usual and there are quite a few books to get through so let's get started so the first category i'm going to start with is surprise surprise thrillers that's like been my bread and butter for some reason these past couple of weeks slash month um i think it's because of the halloween season and of course like fall but i love thrillers like that's just my thing i read thrillers all year round but yeah anyways the first book that i got here that i'm super super excited to read i think this is going to be the next book that i read when i finish up my other two books um that i'm reading at the moment but it is the chalk man by cj tudor so i actually saw this book being hauled in one of Haley hughes's video for those of you who do not know i'm sure you do but Haley hughes is a thriller booktuber she showed this book in one of her like most recent videos and she read the synopsis and i was just so intrigued and i just cannot wait to dive into this so I'm gonna read the synopsis just because a lot of these books I don't really know too much about um, other than like what I've seen on book two, but let's get started. In 1986, Eddie and his friends are on the verge of adolescence, spending their days biking in search of adventure. The Chalkmen are their secret code, sick figures they draw from one another as hidden messages. But one morning, the friends find a Chalkman leading them to the woods. They follow the message only to find the dead body of a teenage girl. In 2016, Eddie is nursing a drinking problem and trying to forget his past until one day he gets a letter containing a chalk man the same one he and his friends saw when they found the body soon he learns that all his old friends were seeing the same note when one of them is killed eddie realizes that saving himself means figuring out what happened all those years ago so this just sounds really really fascinating it's honestly giving me the chestnut man vibes um i haven't read the book but i have seen the show and the only similarity really is just the fact that it's like the serial killer is leaving their mark you know what i mean at like um the crime scene so yeah and i like that show so far so i'm really excited to dive into this and it's fairly short too like it's only about like 200 and let's see it's only about hmm it looks like it's only about like 278, 280 pages, which is really nice. And I noticed that a lot of CJ Tudor's books are very short and I can't wait to dive in. I also meant to say that for some reason, this was in the horror book section of Barnes & Noble. My boyfriend actually found this for me and he found it there. So I'm not sure if this was accidentally misplaced or if this is really considered a horror versus a thriller, but either way, it's scary, okay? It's creepy, it's scary, and it's perfect for this season. Next book I have here, I was so stoked when I saw this at Barnes & Noble. This was on their buy one, get one 50% off table, and it is called The Family Tree by Steph Mullen and Nicole Mabry. So I haven't seen too many people, I haven't seen that many people talk about this one, but I don't know if this is like a newly, newly released book. It actually has all of my fears wrapped up into one. So this is actually about a young woman named Liz, and she takes a family like ancestry DNA test, and she finds out that she's adopted. So while she She's dealing with that and trying to grapple with the fact that she you know is adopted and this is her new reality she finds herself plunged into this intense high profile fbi investigation because the fbi i'm assuming quantico you know ran some dna tests and they got a hit and they figured out that liz actually has a distant relative that may be a serial killer the tri-state serial killer to be exact and this tri-state serial killer has been abducting um pairs of women for 40 years and not leaving any clues behind but only their remains so now liz has to i think pretty much help the fbi figure out who this relative is before it's too late so i just thought that this sounded so interesting and like i said this is one of my like most irrational fears i took a, like an ancestry dna test not too long ago and i always think about that and i'm like god forbid that the fbi shows up at my door because they're telling me that i have a relative like way 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 down the family tree that is like an awful person so yeah really excited to read this one next book that i have here is gone girl by gillian flynn so i have watched the movie gone girl multiple times it's actually one of my favorite movies of all time rosamund pike is a queen and i just loved her acting chops in that movie she did a phenomenal job but i recently found out that gone girl was actually a book before it became a movie and i did not know that i typically like to read the books before watching the tv shows and the movie adaptations like most people but again i just found this out uh i just found out that it was a book not too long ago so i'm really excited to read this one i'm not sure when i'm going to get to it but definitely plan on reading it and 
I just wanted to have this on my bookshelf anyway because again, I love the movie, but I feel like most people know about Gone Girl, but I'll quickly read the synopsis here. So it says, on a warm summer morning in North Carthage, Missouri, it is Nick and Amy Dunn's fifth wedding anniversary. Presents are being wrapped, reservations are being made when Nick's clever and beautiful wife disappears. As the police begin to investigate, the town Golden Boy parades a series of lies, deceits, and inappropriate behavior. Nick is oddly evasive and he's definitely bitter, but is he really a killer? So yeah, I can't wait to see what's different in the book versus the movie. Obviously, you know in the movie they like to exaggerate and dramatize a lot more than what may be included in the book. So I can't wait to see the little like similarities and parallels, but also the differences too. The next book that I have here is You by Caroline Kepnes. So most of you probably know that this is a Netflix show. It says it right here on the sticker. This is a show on Netflix, but it was a book first before it became a show. And the actors that are currently like, you know, the main characters um, in this season, the new season that is out right now is Penn Badgley and Victoria Pedretti. Penn plays Joe and Victoria plays love which is joe's wife slash the mother of his child so yes um i never read the book before i never read the series i honestly did not know that this was a book series before it was even a tv show i don't know where i am and why i don't realize that half of these things are books before they become movies or shows but here we are <laughs> so i actually watched the first episode of the new season last night or two nights ago and i was hooked again and i decided to go to barnes noble to actually pick up the book that started it all and read it because i read a sample of this on my ipad and i read it in exactly Penn's voice and it made for an, a more enjoyable reading experience so I cannot wait to dive into this and read it in his voice, but also just to be transported back to season one because this show like ugh, is just phenomenal. And the first season in particular was just great. Like talk about coming out the gate swinging this series phenomenal. I definitely recommend looking it up if you are not familiar with it. I'm not going to go into the synopsis just because it's so popular. Everyone pretty much knows about it. But again, if you don't, I definitely recommend just going on Google and looking it up. Um, I will say that there are themes of like obsession, stalker, stalker like situations, um, murder, that type of stuff. So yeah, if you're into true crime, if you're into any of like psychological thrillers or horror books, I definitely recommend um, looking this up and possibly giving this a read and also tuning into the show because it is great. Next book that I picked up here is actually The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. So I recently read this and I have the Penguin um, black spine like classics edition of this book so i read that this month i want to say and i fell in love with it i fell in love with oscar wilde's writing and i just fell in love with the characters in this book and the whole storyline itself i thought it was so fascinating and the fact that this was written back in the 1900s was just mind-blowing to me and the book was actually even considered a scandal when it was published because of how much this book touches on corruption and sinning and all of that type of stuff and you know back then they were not they were not with that type of stuff they did not like talking about that type of stuff like in public like that especially not to have it in their books so Oscar Wilde snapped with this one but for those of you who do not know this is about a young man named Dorian Gray who is very beautiful very charming and honestly uh, quite naive but one day he decides to get his portrait painted and once the portrait is finished he takes a look at it and he looks at it with this sort of hatred and disgust because he recognizes his beauty within the portrait and he gets really upset because he's like I really wish that this portrait could grow old and ugly whereas I stay young and beautiful forever well he says that out loud and he doesn't realize that when he said that it was pretty much a wish and the wish came true so because of that you start to see Dorian turn to a life of crime essentially and he just starts to become a very not nice person and he drastically changes from what he was in the beginning of the book to the very end and like I said it's just a story that follows his journey um, throughout his life about like sinning, corruption, um, committing immoral acts, etc. So I thought this was a phenomenal book. It was so creepy, so melancholic, so bleak and also horrifying. There were some scenes in here that actually kind of had me jump back a little bit because I was like whoa I did not see that coming and the certain like chapters and certain scenes that happen within here are just so violent and so brutal that I could see why that this was also considered like a scandal back then. But I fell in love with this story. This is definitely one of my favorite classics of all time now. And I just decided to go to, go to Barnes & Noble and pick up a very nice edition of it because I try to pick up nice editions of the classics that I rate five stars or that I feel very connected to. Um, so I actually have the Phantom of the Opera. I have the Little Mermaid and other fairy tales and I have the Wizard of Oz and now I also have the picture of Dorian Gray. So yeah, this was actually very inexpensive. It was only about like $10 for this and you have the green sprayed edges and it's just beautiful to be honest. And there is also a quote on the back here and it says, if it were I who was to be always young and the picture that was to grow old, for that 
for that I would give everything and that's pretty much the synopsis of the book like honestly that little excerpt that was pretty much the book but yeah definitely recommend picking um, up a copy of the picture of Dorian Gray if you have not read it yet I'm trying to challenge myself to read more classics and I try to read one um, one a month and for this month it was a picture of Dorian Gray so definitely recommend um, picking this up and really reading it in the fall just because it has that like I said spooky gothic creepy horrifying like imagery and atmospheric tone that a lot of those gothic literature books back in the day have it now to the wire we only have two books left and they're both romances um after having all of those uh th thriller and horror books added to my tbr i knew i needed a few palette cleansers and romance is that for me first one here is take a hint danny brown by talia hibbert so i know that this uh trilogy the brown sisters trilogy has been getting a lot of hype on book talk on bookstagram on booktube etc and for some reason i just haven't felt inclined to pick up the series i don't know why there's nothing like there's really no rhyme or reason as to why I didn't want to pick up any of these books. It just for some reason I kept putting it off. I think when there's books or series that are super super hyped, I just get like nervous and I don't want to like read them right away just because I don't want to be disappointed, you know? So that's kind of like my reasoning for it, I guess. But I was interested in this one the most out of the entire like Brown Sisters trilogy. Um, it just sounds like it's right in my alley with a few of my favorite tropes. And honestly, like they just look so cute. Like love the POC representation. They just look so cute. And I don't really want to go into the full synopsis here, but I know that this is about a young woman named Danny who is um, very like, you know, professional and very successful. She's like an academic, etc. And she's also just like very outgoing, very boisterous. And then on the flip side of that, you have her love interest here and his name is Zafir. And he, I think it's the security guard um, and he works like in the building that Danny works in. And he is like very like, I think shy and like reserved, but he is also like a hopeless romantic. Like he loves love and he's trying to like, really like understand women and understand like what they want out of a relationship. And I just think that is so cute and so beautiful. And like, we need more men like that. But anyways, <laughs> I just thought that was so cute. And I'm assuming that him and Danny, like, you know, I think they're friends. I think him and Danny are actually friends, but then I think something happens where like they get closer to one another, like closer and closer, and then they start falling in love. So yeah, I don't really, like I said, want to go into the full synopsis because I feel like most people know what this is about. If you don't, definitely recommend looking it up. It is a very popular romance series out right now. But yeah, this is the one that spoke to me the most, so I cannot wait to read this. And who knows, maybe after I read this, I'll be like so hooked and so invested that I'm gonna want to read uh, Get a Life Chloe Brown and Actor A.G. Brown. But for right now, I'm more interested in Danny Brown and her storyline. And the last book here is The Perfect Date by Evelyn Lozada. And honestly, I have been seeing this book in Barnes & Noble for years, to be honest. And every time I see it, I'm like, I'm going to pick it up. I'm going to pick it up. And then I never do. But I knew that this was always going to be like on my radar. And I knew I was going to want to pick this up eventually. And when I was at Barnes & Noble yesterday, I couldn't really find that many romance books that I was like interested in picking up at that time. For some reason, like the ones that I had on my list were not like showing themselves to me <laughs> at the store. The only one that did was Take a Hint, Danny Brown. But I have been wanting, like I said, this book for years. And I finally decided to pick it up because it was just staring me right in my face. And for those of you who do not know, Evelyn Lozada is actually a reality TV personality. She was, I think, I don't think she's on it anymore, but she used to be on the show Basketball Wise, if you ever watched that. She was married to Chad Ochocinco for a long time. Um, and she decided, I guess, to write her own book. And I'm very happy for her because this just sounds so cute. So right here it says, when a single mom ends up playing an unwilling fake girlfriend to a charming playboy baseball player, love suddenly turns everything upside down in this fun, heartwarming, multicultural romance. This has all of my tropes in it, okay? It has the fake dating, and it also has the sports romance. Like, I don't know what it is, but I love a good sports romance. Even though I'm not into sports myself, except for volleyball, I just always gravitate towards sports romances. I don't know what it is, but there's a certain je ne sais quoi, you know, about it. So yeah, really excited to read this one. I think that this is gonna be a cute little short read. I haven't really heard too many people talk about this one, so I'm not sure how this ranks on Goodreads. I don't really wanna go on Goodreads to see because I don't want it to like taint my view of it going into the story. So I'm just gonna read it and we will see how it goes. All right, y'all, and those are all of the books that I picked up from Barnes & Noble yesterday. I'm really excited with all of the books that I have here. I think that I have like great gems and I cannot wait to dive into every single one of these stories. I don't know when, I don't know when, but eventually. I know I'm gonna start with the Chalkman first, at least, because hello, that concept is amazing, sounds great. But yeah, really excited with everything that I picked up. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one, bye.